Um, I teach an ABE GD class in the afternoon and I have a multi-level, multinational class. I have Americans and I have a lot of students who uh, speak English as their second, third or fourth or fifth language. So I have a very, very interesting, dynamic... Okay, good morning everyone. Good morning. And I am very happy to see you today. And we will start our class with annotating the reading passage. We will be reading the text called Rain. Okay? So I will give you the papers. So please um, take out your highlighters that we will be using them for annotation. So um, what is annotation? Why do we annotate texts? So we highlight, highlight. Or we circle, right? Yes. Or we underline important ideas. And why do we do this? Why is it important? Why do we need to do this? As I will model the first paragraph, I will annotate the first paragraph for you. And then you will continue. So you will read in groups and pairs and you will annotate uh, the second and the third paragraph, okay? Yes. So thank you. Rain. Hmm. I am sure this is the title. So I will write down title. So I see bold font. So usually we use bold font for titles, right? So uh, title is what? Why do we need a title? What What is a title for? To tell what the passage is about. Mm -hmm. A general idea. So, uh, looking at this title, I know that I am going to read a text about rain. Maybe it's science, maybe it's not. At this point, I am not sure. I will find out. So let me read the first paragraph. So the first sentence looks like, um, like what? A topic like sentence. Like a topic sentence. Yes. Usually the first sentence in a paragraph is a topic sentence. Yes. And I know that from the topic sentence, I know that I will be reading about rain. So I will highlight it. It's very important. Sometimes I have to uh, create uh, different level assignments and activities, but um, I also discovered that working as a group, working in small groups or in pairs, using share pair techniques uh, really, really help uh, with this multi-level um, classes and multi-level proficiency levels. Today we are focusing on reading primarily. and. Um, I uh, always try to incorporate technology um, and my students really love it because most of them uh, think about continuing their education and enrolling into technical uh, professional programs. And as we all know, uh, there are more and more classes available online or in hybrid format. So it's, it's essential for them to learn how to incorporate technology and how to use technology uh, for academic purposes. I love this class. Usually, you know, I'm the quiet type most of the time, but you know, I came, I came, from, I came from high school to here and trying to exceed my learning so I can be in the culinary arts. You know, Katrina is a very good teacher. I love her, and you know, she's a really cool teacher, so to speak. So this class is really great. You know, I, we we know we know each other. You know, by by whatever means is necessary. So every morning, come here, say good morning to everyone. 
I like how I'm learning new strategies about re reading because all these strategies that she's teaching me now I did not know in high school because we're in high school we're just going like that we're just fast paced and I didn't you know get all this um, information from the teachers she breaks it down for me and then I learn from what her experience is so I'm like, okay, I, I got the strategy down, I know how to do everything. So when the GED test comes up, bam, I pass it right away. And so that makes me feel confident every day I'm doing the same thing, but so what? It's learning new strategies every single day. So now we have uh, less working groups and uh, answer these four questions. And again, you will practice, you will model, uh, think aloud, okay? So uh, read the questions to each other, highlight or underline the key words in each question and try to find the paragraph or the sentence in the text that will give you the answer to uh, the question. and it's not just individually and then we get to just basically get to know all the students on a personal level. Use uh, what we've read and connect it with our own experiences. Have you ever experienced fear? When we read a chapter, we are, we are reading uh, because of Win Dixie. It's a wonderful, interesting novel, and uh, my students love it. So when we read uh, a novel, we focus on main ideas. Uh, what uh, you think uh, author means, or what do you think is going to happen? So we focus on mood, and uh, it is it is very challenging. So, and again, I use document reader uh, to help them visualize certain concepts. So I, I uh, model, usually I model uh, a couple of pages using document reader, and then they uh, continue reading in pairs and in small groups, and they share uh, their ideas with each other. Michelle, will you read your personal definition of fear? <laughs> My personal definition of fear is like if something scares you and you don't really know what to do and like if you're younger you're more scared of like scary movies or something that jumps out in the dark you're easier to scare and then like when you get older you're scared of things like car accidents and people driving crazy on the road. Now I would like you to work with the blog. Every day I post um, a question about um, a certain um, aspect of the chapter and um, they um, post their comments. Uh, but I also uh, put very strict requirements on how they write their comments. I want them to write in a paragraph format, so they would write, say, uh, an introductory sentence, then supporting ideas and a conclusion. I also ha I require them to check the spelling before they uh, post a comment. So I want I'm teaching uh, them to be professional, because a lot of people think that if you use technology 
say emails they can be sloppy so uh, they you know pretty much don't care about spelling or punctuation and I want to break this stigma and I want them to understand that technology is yeah. important and people other people can judge you um, and you know sometimes exclude you or maybe not hire you based on how you read or how you compose your email so this is another very important aspect we've been working on so and I think that blogs are really helpful we've been doing blogging for a little while now and it seems to actually be a lot of fun it's a fun way to be able to use technology so when I read a book my books look like this. I mark them. I work with them. I write in the margins. I highlight. I circle. I underline important ideas. And um, say if I need to come back to this text, the book, for example, in a year, I don't. I don't have to read it again. I, I will just read my comments. I will read the passages and sentences that I highlighted. And um, the facts will come back. So that's why all my books, not just this one, all my books I read look like this. So I really, really work with the text. So, and I like to use document reader because it helps, I think it helps you uh, see what I am doing and how I am approaching reading the text. So um, let's read uh, chapter six. And I will read a couple of pages and then you will continue reading in groups, in small groups or in pairs. So you will read to each other and you will underline and highlight those important ideas and um, something, something, that, uh, something that happened in the text that made you uh, surprised or made you um, wonder. So let me start reading um, chapter number six. So, uh, as I said, just I will read a couple of pages. I spent a lot of time that summer at the Herman W. Block Memorial Library. So this is a very interesting uh, idea because think about it. The first, uh, Opal just moved to a new city and she says that she spends a lot of time in the library. It tells a lot about her, right? When I was Opal's age, I didn't really have a lot of friends either. Mm -hmm. So you can add her mm -hmm. always from this level. Yeah. yeah. I find it very important for my students to open up and share their difficulties, their struggles, especially with academic type reading. So most of my students enjoy reading, but some acknowledge and admit that they don't really like reading and they don't read on a daily basis. So how many times um, how often you feel depressed or sad or frustrated uh, when you read? Quite often. When In my case. Something you don't understand and you get frustrated. Mm -hmm, exactly. Or you can't get it. Yep. Okay. What makes reading difficult for you and most importantly, uh, what can you do to make it easier for yourself? Here we're talking about strategies. You read the title, mm -hmm. then scan all the text, mm -hmm. the text that you're talking. Mm -hmm. Then, and then read the main idea, mm -hmm. what they're talking about. Mm -hmm. Then read the completion mm -hmm. of the of the paragraph. Mm -hmm. Then, I think you need to read the question. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I, some important work, I like the yellow. Uh, I like, I separate the color, you know, pink mm -hmm. for uh, important, you know, the yellow is for important work and some work I don't understand, I highlight the pink color, mm -hmm. so I have to look up the, the dictionary or computer mm -hmm. Google it to find out what that means, how to speak, how to spell it, mm -hmm. 